Welcome to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and I am proud to announce that my YouTube channel has hit 100,000 subscribers. And I couldn't have done that without your support. So I thought it'd be an awesome opportunity to do a shop tour. Because as a maker, I love seeing other makers' creative spaces. It always gives me ideas for things that I could do or improve on my current setup. Because my shop isn't all that big. I work in a third car garage that has been walled off, but all my workstations are easily accessible and all that was planned out ahead of time. And more importantly, this space is extremely inviting because I spend a ridiculous amount of time out here. So I have surround sounds, I have TVs, I have computers, and most importantly, I have an AC and heater in the back specifically designed for this room. Now this video is based more on the tools and technology to actually make these videos. But if you're new to cosplay and prop making and you wanna do more of that, be sure to check out my basic tools and materials video, which I'll link over in the description section. So if you are a maker or if you wanna do content creation, I kinda of wanna give you a peek behind the scenes at least to what I do. So to start off, let's go ahead, let's flip that camera around so I can show you exactly what I see when I'm making these videos. See, it's not all that impressive, just a few lights, a camera, a mic, but it doesn't need to be. It's all about what the camera sees going the opposite way. To film all my videos and take pictures, I have a bunch of different cameras and they're all Canon brand. And that's just because I started off with Canon years ago and everything is interchangeable, which is nice because I have a bunch of really expensive lenses and I can use them on all the different cameras. Now, the one that I film with primarily nowadays is the Canon EOS RP, which is a mirrorless camera and that's the one that is going currently. I also have a Canon SL2 that I use for B-roll and I have Canon T5Is that I use to take pictures. Now, when it comes to all the lenses, which there are a bunch to choose from, I pretty much have two that are my main go-tos. I have a 24 millimeter that I use for almost everything that's up close, and I have a 50 millimeter that's on the camera now. And what that does is it makes a nice clear image here, and it blurs the background to give it this really cool effect. The 24 millimeter gives me all the nice close-up detail shots so I can show you this is exactly where this piece needs to go. But I also have just some basic lenses plus a macro lens and a wide angle lens just in case. You never know. Sometimes there's um, a project that gets too big for the table and I have to go to a wide angle lens just to get the entire thing in the shot. My desk is made up of two Harbor Freight tables that have been bolted together. I run an Acer laptop with an additional monitor and this works great to give me reference images and access to the internet. Hanging from the ceiling is a Dremel that I'll use on camera, and of course the desk is filled with lots of different tools. And I have rulers, lots of rulers. For my in-shop audio, I use a Deity D3 shotgun mic attached to a boom pole. Now building the projects is one thing, but filming it and getting the right angles is definitely a time consuming process. And one thing that helps me out is I have these Joby ball adapters all around my shop. And what that does is it allows me to pop a camera into a spot or a different angle really quick without actually having to screw it into a new head. So like on this Gorilla tripod here, I have a Joby adapter on the bottom of my camera. I can quickly pop that in, put it to the angle that I need. Now, the one that I use the most is my Rode microphone stand arm. The reason I went with the microphone arm is because it's a lot more robust than some of the others. And just like the Joby points, I have Rode stand points all around my desk. So I can take my Rode arm, put it over here for the angle that I need, pop a camera in, and then if that angle isn't perfect, I adjust the ball adapter until I can get precisely the shot that I'm looking for. And again, I can take this and then move it over here, get an overhead shot or move it over to my sanding station and get that shot all relatively quick. Another thing that's important is that I have remote controls set up for all my cameras. So that way I can set up the shot, check it out on the TV, make sure that it's all in focus and everything is exactly how I want it. And then all I have to do is press the button to start recording versus setting everything up, walking around my desk, pressing the camera, coming back, making sure not to bump anything. This is a definite time saver. The workspace outside of my desk that gets the most use is definitely going to be my sanding station and by far one of the most crucial parts to this shop. And that's because when I left my old shop, I realized how much foam and resin dust had built up 
all along the edges. And I was gonna make sure that that wasn't going to happen again. So I built a custom sanding station here out of two by fours and some masonite board. Now it's connected to a Shop Fox dust collection system. But before it gets to that point, it goes through an Onita Cyclone down into a metal bucket. So all of the debris that's heavier than the air itself goes through this Cyclone, goes down into a collection bucket that I dump about once a year. But I tell you what, the amount of dust that that keeps out of the rest of the shop is night and day. Like that thing has been a godsend. And especially with the wind air filtration up above, this makes the shop a lot easier to work in. There's not as much dust and it's a lot better for my lungs. I used a wire wall grid to hang props along my wall for additional decoration. Along my desk, you'll find the tools that I use almost every single day, including brushes, drill bits, and various adhesives. All these various cosplay weapons and only one practical one, because a fly can ruin a shot. Now the bandsaw that I used was gifted to me by an employee back when I worked at Lowe's and it's pretty old. Actually, it's so old that when I got it, the gaskets all in the interior were deteriorating. I had to get new gaskets and a new power supply to get it up and running. One thing I didn't change though was the blade. The blade itself is extremely old. It actually can't cut wood or PVC very well at all, but it cuts foam like butter. The drill press doesn't get used all that often, but it was a Harbor Freight pickup attached to a floor stand. And again, more rulers. Throughout my shop, I have lots of HD foam products everywhere. You can also never have too many clamps or various screws, nuts, or bolts. Along the back wall, I wanted lots of really cool things for people to look at. This is basically a who's who among cosplay props with lots of different Easter eggs. Behind all the props, you'll still find functional areas, like this stack of dowels and PVC pipes. Now when it comes to the tool chest, again, it was another pickup when I worked at Lowe's, but the thing I love about it is a lot of the tools that are in this chest were ones that were used by my grandfather. And so I think it's really cool that I get to use a lot of my grandpa's tools in all the projects that I do now. I definitely need to go through this shelf because it's been a while and it could use some reorganization. But here I've got lots of clear storage, full of my soldering stuff, Legos for molding, paints, hot glue sticks, various chip brushes, and lots and lots of twine. Having them clear though is very important though because at least I can see what's inside. and my fabulous AC and heater. This thing will cooler heat the shop in less than 15 minutes. I wanna thank all you that have been purchasing HD foam from the links in the description section and those that are on my website. Those purchases definitely help out my channel and help me continue to do what I do. I also wanna thank everyone that has been reaching out to me. I recently posted that I've been having some health issues that I've been going through and this is actually one of the very first videos back in the shop and it's definitely a motivation for me to get better. So thank you very much for sending all the positive vibes my way. But here you can see your space doesn't have to be gigantic to get a lot of work done. So hopefully I'll enjoy that little peek behind the scenes and you can see there's a lot that goes into making these videos, more than just the workspace or the projects themselves, all the tools and the equipment that I use to really make this happen. And that's why I appreciate so many of you watching these videos and sharing them with your friends and family. And one more behind the scenes. So a lot of you apparently out there think that I'm bald underneath my cap. It turns out I've got a lot of hair, but I wear the cap to keep the foam and resin dust out of it. Until next time, my friends, build your best with the best. HD Foam.